The Chinese assault rifle is a somewhat common weapon found in the capital wastes with a very interesting history and design behind it. But before we get into this video, I want you to comment, leave a like, and subscribe. It only takes a second and means a lot to me. The Chinese Assault Rifle, or Type 93 as it is officially named, was the primary Chinese service rifle during the Sino-American War. It is a simple and cheap design that was born out of the severe shortages of the mid-21st century, and so requires minimal machining and material to manufacture. For instance, the receiver cover is a simple sheet of steel bent three times into a box that encloses the internals, an extremely simple yet practical design meant for expediency during a massive war of attrition where the soldier's life expectancy can be measured in minutes on the battlefield. Field. On top of the cover is the rear sight, which is mounted on a small tower that was pressed out of the sheet to give you a clear view of the target. The rear sight is a U-notched, tangent design, while the front sight is a simple post with semicircle protective wings surrounding it, while a mounting bracket exists at the rear of the top cover to accommodate some sort of optic. Interestingly, if you were to look down the sights, you would realize that they are at the 300 and 350 meter setting, meaning you would be shooting high and long at anything within reasonable ranges. But besides this, the gun is bare bones, with a folding wireframe buttstock, plastic pistol grip, a slab side and scratch the shit receiver, while the handguard is nothing more than two wooden panels bolted together over the barrel and gas tube, which is just large enough to not char your fingers. Overall making the gun look a little worse for wear, but still very functional, effective, and practical in the post-war world. Especially so, since it is chambered in the 556x45 for the American Communist Insurgents, instead of its native 762x39 Soviet, making the ammunition ready readily available for anyone willing to scrounge around a little bit. And I make these assumptions based on the distinctive banana curvature of the magazines, which is needed so the 762 Soviet, as seen here, can feed correctly during operation because of its tapered case that forces the magazine to accommodate, compared to the 556, which is straight walled meaning those magazines can have none or much less of a curve to it. But my point to this entire explanation is that the use of J-Rig 762 magazines converted to hold 556 is done by pressing the reinforcing ribs deeper and modifying the feed lips to accommodate the smaller cartridge, which is another prime example of how desperate the Chinese economy was, that it was deemed more efficient to convert magazines for specialty rifles than to set up a small production line specifically for those guns, that every scrap of steel, man hour, and manufacturing line was so precious that nothing could be spared. The barrel length is 16.3 inches long, almost a whole 4 inches shorter than the R91 we covered previously, which, when combined with a folding stock, makes this gun a much more compact and versatile weapon in the trenches of Anchorage. But, more importantly, a 5.56 weighing 55 grains, 3.56 grams, scoots along at 3,187 feet per second and hits with 1,241 foot-pounds of energy from this barrel length which is way more than enough to kill someone, but where this bullet really becomes deadly is when it begins to tumble and fragment about an inch into the body, causing a sudden and violent release of energy that shreds everything touched and causes a horrific fist-sized wound, which, if sent to a mass, will usually be fully enclosed in the body and is devastating. The controls of this rifle are pulled straight from the AK, with a three-piece selected lever located on the right side of the gun just above the trigger, semi-auto on the bottom, fully automatic in the middle, and safe at the top. Just in front of this is the charging handle, which is attached directly to the bulk carrier, and directly underneath it is the magazine release tab. Sadly, the reload animation in this game is impossible because of the weapon's design, which requires you to unlock and rock out, and then rock a new magazine in as such. One question about this rifle I don't know is whether the gun uses the short or long stroke gas systems for operation. Because the Chinese have a long history of creating an AK lookalike rifle called the Type 81 that uses the short stroke gas system as seen here in my SKS, this is where the gas piston punches the bolt carrier rearwards for extraction of expend casing after firing, as opposed to the true AK's long stroke where the entire piston stays with the bolt carrier during this operation. Either way, the Chinese assault rifle is still gas operated and works wonderfully. There is one unique variant of the Chinese assault rifle, and that is the Zhuanlong assault rifle, meaning Black Dragon in Chinese. This is nearly identical to the base Chinese assault rifle, except for having a 36 round magazine and being slightly more powerful. The way you acquire the Zhuanlong is by going through the unmarked quest Jig's Loot, found with a Museum of Technology where you have to access three specific terminals and click on the correct codes left to you by Prime. The hint is in the name, choose the Prime numbers. Once finished, a note appears on screen that tells you to meet Prime at the usual spot, 
which is a diner near the Jury Street metro station, where you will find Prime's body with the Zhun Long assault rifle and a few hundred caps. So that's the Chinese assault rifle, an interesting evolution of the AK platform into something uniquely Chinese. Cheap, simple, mass produced, and some are liable, but Americanized slightly to arm the insurrectionists and Chinese secret agents within the capital. Thank you to my good friend Robin for reviewing this script for me. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.